guys, Mr. Bankberg here. This is part two of lesson 5.1. Two objectives for this video. We're gonna use trig identities to evaluate trig functions, and we're gonna use trig identities to rewrite and simplify trig expressions. In this first example, we're looking at adding up some trig expressions, and what I want you to notice about these things is they're both fractions, and just like any other fraction, before we can add those things together, we have to have common denominators, and right now we don't have common denominators. So what I'm gonna do is on the left-hand side is I'm gonna multiply this fraction top and bottom by the sine of theta. And then with our right-hand fraction, I'm gonna multiply by this one plus the cosine of theta on top and on bottom. Then we'll have a common denominator of the sine of theta times one plus the cosine of theta. Looking at doing some multiplication on the top, if we take sine times sine, we're gonna get a sine squared of theta. And if we distribute this cosine on the right-hand side, cosine times one is the cosine of theta, and cosine times cosine is going to give us a cosine squared of theta. Now we're gonna to look to simplify this down a little bit. And I see one of our Pythagorean identities happening. We've got this sine squared of theta right here, plus a cosine squared of theta, and sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So we've got one, plus cosine of theta left on top. On bottom, we've still got this sine of theta times one plus the cosine of theta. And if we look at what's happening here, we have a term on top that also shows up on bottom. So that's actually gonna cancel out. So then we're gonna be left with one over the sine of theta. And we don't typically wanna leave our answers as fractions if we can avoid it. So we could use a reciprocal identity to say that this is the same as the cosecant of theta. Our next example is very similar. We're adding some fractional things together. So before we get started, we're gonna to look to find some common denominators. On the left-hand side, I'm going to multiply by our one minus the sine of theta, which shows up as our denominator of the other fraction. And whatever we do to the bottom, we also have to do to the top. So we'll multiply by one minus the sine of theta there. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna multiply by one plus the sine of theta. Doing our multiplication on top, one times one is one. Negative sine of theta times one is negative sine of theta. We've got our plus sine. One times one is still one. One times the sine of theta is a positive sine of theta. Now on bottom, we could go through and foil all of this out, but this is gonna end up being a difference of squares. So what I'm gonna do is take the one times one and get one. Negative sine times positive sine gives us a negative sine squared of theta. If you wanna run through and do all of the foiling for that, you would see that the negative sine would cancel out with the positive sine. So we'd be left with one minus the sine squared on bottom. I'm looking to combine some like terms on top. We've got a one and another one, so one plus one is two. This negative sine of theta is gonna cancel with our positive sine of theta. So we've got two over one minus the sine squared of theta. Now I'm looking to simplify this down. We've got that Pythagorean identity that says the sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta equals one. But if we look down here, this says one minus the sine squared. Well, we could just subtract that sine squared of theta over to the other side. And then we end up with the cosine squared of theta equals one minus the sine squared of theta. And I'm gonna do a little substitution here. So I'm gonna take this one minus the sine squared of theta right here. Well, here we've got one minus the sine squared. We're gonna replace it with that cosine squared. So now our fraction says two over cosine squared of theta. And just like I said on the last one, if we can rewrite this as not being a fraction, we wanna to try to do that. So I'm actually gonna pull this two that's on top out in front. So then it's two times one over the cosine squared of theta. And then I'm gonna use a reciprocal identity. We know that cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, but this is a cosine squared. So when we do the reciprocal and turn that into a secant, it becomes a secant squared of theta. In this example, we're gonna go through and rewrite this one over one plus the sine of x, so it's not a fraction. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna to try to get a monomial denominator, meaning one term in the denominator. And we're gonna use an idea that we've dealt with before. We're gonna use a conjugate. So on the bottom, this says one plus the sine of x. We're gonna to multiply top and bottom by one minus the sine of x. That's our conjugate. So when we do that, taking one times that stuff on top, we're just gonna get one minus the sine of x. 
on bottom. This is a difference of squares type of foiling. So 1 times 1 is 1. Positive sine of x times a negative sine of x gives us a minus sine squared of x. And we can go back to one of our Pythagorean identities where we know that the cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus the sine squared of x. So I'm going to replace that stuff on bottom with our cosine squared. So then we get 1 minus the sine of x over a cosine squared of x. We're not quite done because we don't want to have a fraction at all. So what I'm going to do is use a reciprocal idea to swing this cosine squared up to the top. And when we do that, the reciprocal of a cosine squared would be a secant squared of x. So this is going to be our answer for this one. We took that fraction thing, made it so it was no longer a fraction. Next thing we're looking at doing is something called trig substitution. So we've got this expression, square root of 4 plus x squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace that x with 2 tangent of theta. So here's our expression down here, square root of 4 plus x squared. Like I said, we're going to replace that x with 2 tangent of theta. So we've got 4 plus 2 tangent of theta squared. And now we're going to go through and simplify this down. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually square this 2 tangent of theta. So when we do that, 2 squared is 4, and the tangent squared is the tangent squared of theta. Now, I see a GCF in here. Each one of these has a 4 in it, so I'm going to factor that out. So we've got the square root of 4 times, well, if we factor a 4 out of that first term, we've got that one placeholder, plus take the 4 out of here, and all we have left is that tangent squared of theta. Now that second piece, the 1 plus the tangent of theta, that's one of our Pythagorean identities. And it's the secant squared that's equal to 1 plus the tangent squared of theta. So I'm going to replace the 1 plus the tangent squared with a secant squared. So then we've got the square root of 4 times the secant squared of theta. And now we can evaluate the square root since it's multiplication happening underneath here. We would just square root each piece. Square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of the secant squared is just the secant of theta. And then we're all done with that one. Last example we're looking at has some natural logs in there. And what we're going to do is use some logarithm properties that we talked about earlier this year to condense this down into a single logarithm. And then we'll use some trig identities to simplify it. So here's what I see going on. We've got addition happening with these two logarithms. And remember, properties of logarithms say that we turn addition into a multiplication problem. So we've got the natural log of cosecant times the tangent of theta. And then we're going to use trig identities inside of here to simplify it down. And remember, we said if these are different trig identities that don't necessarily cancel out right away, one thing we might want to try is writing them in terms of sines and cosines. So cosecant can be written as 1 over the sine of theta. And a tangent can be written as sine of theta over cosine of theta. And then if we look at this, on our first fraction, we've got a sine on bottom. On our second fraction, we've got a sine on top. So those things are going to cancel each other out. So now we've got the natural log of 1 over the cosine of theta. But then again, we want to avoid fractions if we can. So I'm going to take that 1 over the cosine and replace it with a secant of theta. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.